<laughs> so today we have with us an iPhone 7 Plus. This one does not go on. And um, some bit of history. So the owner, she says that she was using it and then the charge dropped to 30 as she was using it. So she decided to hook it up to a charger and go on to do some other stuff outside. When she came back, the phone had blacked out and nothing was happening. It doesn't turn on, doesn't do anything. Oh, by the way, thanks for watching Phone Lookout and uh, subscribe if it's your first time. Uh, like the video. Uh, yeah, comment where you have to. So, this is an iPhone 7 Plus and uh, it blacked out. It does not go on and it's not an issue with the battery uh, because blacked out while it was being charged uh, so right now we are going to fix it so for now we will need a screwdriver uh, this one uh, the tip has five rays I don't know whether you see it, but uh, yeah, it's very hard. It's not within the focus range, but uh, yeah. And then this one is a plus. Those two, and then I may need a surgical blade right there. So let's get started. Now, if you look at it, just like with the previous iPhones. Um, the thing at the back here has a set of screws and they are two so our first thing is to get rid of those two screws uh, can't seem to get it into focus I think my camera is too close now right there so that screw and that screw okay let's get to it uh, get the first one right of place. and um, always have your screwdriver magnetized so you do not have to reach out for the screws with your fingernails now with that done uh, I think I should mention one or two things now this iPhone 7 is a bit different from how they made the iPhone 6 and the 6s plus um, The fibers are on this side uh, Whereas for the 6 plus you have to watch out for fiber at this end Now with these two screws removed Next thing is we are going to reach out in between here Now when you look at the outer frame and uh, the screen there's that layer between them so you reach out for that push in the blade as you might see and then attempt lifting it up like this do not exert a lot of force otherwise you will deflect the screen and crack it now work it around uh, clockwise keep going along that edge and keep going okay now we've reached that far mm -hmm. come around here okay stopped there okay now <laughs> I'm going to be forced to have to fix it. I have been bending over. So if you look at this, this is lifting up. And then, uh, okay, like that, like that. Now, I'm 
this side. Uh, by the way, I normally like to first remove the SIM card uh, tray out of place, so poke that out and uh, the stream card tray pops out. Ah, even her line still is inside, so I think this happened not very far from now, not so much the distant past. Okay. Back to that side. Be careful, do not attempt to lift this up because there are screws underneath there. Now with after remove after prying it from these sides, what you'll do you'll notice that this side is much harder and interlocked. So do not use a lot of force trying to uh, pry this out. Basically what you do after this bottom side has bottom side has um, gotten out of the frame I think you see right there now pull it backwards a bit slightly but not all the way so as to simply expose those the, the, the area now with that done next is to oh, open the screen towards the left like this now look carefully under there that green thing is not supposed to be there that shows me this phone probably was repaired at some point um, that's a sticker paper so I can place this do not overbend the screen just keep it at about a maximum of 90 degrees from the lower frame uh, I think let me mention one or two things because well, this phone having already been opened some time back are things that you may not see here that should be in an actual iPhone 7 plus um, I should notice there's a connector here this connector goes into the screen now 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 um, this connector is actually held in place using a metal plate that is held around the sides by a set of screws. So is uh, this connector that goes into the earpiece, front facing camera, and the proximity sensor. Now I'm wearing gloves, but if you have a prying tool, you could reach out with your fingertip and lift that up. And lift that up, and lift that up. So right now, I may not so much be interested in lifting that up, but since I'm going to be working with the battery and I do not want these fibers getting into place, I'll simply pry this out. So it leaves me a lot of work room and no fear to move around. So there's actually another fiber underneath reach out for that and remove it so assuming you had to replace your screen this is what you would have to do up to until this point and plugging in those things um, I think is a no-brainer but uh, I guess it takes some courage and confidence to deal with it so right now uh, I think let me make mention of a few components that may be of interest. This is your battery, which turns out to be um, uh, with the milliamp hour rating. It's a 290, 2,900 milliamp hour battery. Uh, those are the camera modules, uh, back facing, two sets. Uh, that's the charging port and that's the sub port that holds it that's your loudspeaker um, so right now the first thing I'll have to do is check this battery for power and see if its voltage is high enough for the charger to detect it okay now I'll reach out and unplug my battery right there this under normal circumstances would also have been held down by that plate so plug it from 
this side and there comes our battery now I need my multimeter to verify the voltage of the battery and that's okay I have to put it in voltage mode DC measuring a maximum voltage of 20 oh, with my probes I'll reach out for this battery connector sorry about the flickering but uh, I do not know what has gone wrong with my lights today so we'll just have to bear with it that way now okay put one probe on this terminal and another on that now this battery is at 24 2.47 volts clearly uh, you cannot get any charging IC to detect this battery so I'll have to jump start this battery now if you notice the red probe is to the left ah okay I had hoped you see. Let me try to focus. Hmm. Looks like certain areas cannot be focused upon. So, like I said, that was something falling. Like I said, one probe. Here on the left, another on the right. Now you see the voltmeter reads a negative value, so if I interchange, it should read a positive value. A positive value. So that's my positive terminal, that's my negative terminal, and these are I think the detect terminals. Yeah, always at a lower voltage compared to the other. So the leftmost is our negative terminal, and then the rightmost is our, our positive terminal. And now Right now, I just want to check for the ground to reconfirm to the terminal and the body of the phone. Okay, clearly, the left side is confirmed to be my phone is flickering a lot. I do not like that. My, my, my light is flickering a lot, so I think I'll just have to get rid of it. Go dim on you guys. Anyway, I think you will see. No, let me keep it at that. Um, what else do I need to do now I need to resuscitate that uh, battery unfortunately I have my thing unable to reach the camera so this part will just go off camera so I'm raise I want to raise the voltage of the battery and then come back and proceed with my tests okay so we return I have uh, raise the voltage of the battery but anyway let me just put back the slide on you'll bear with the flickering now let me now show you the voltage that it reads for me 3.72 3.72 and so 
right now I'm going to do phase two and then come back. Okay, so um, with that done, I have to plug in the phone, uh, plug in the screen, but then uh, bring my charger and test it and see if the screen lights up. Now, carefully, uh, by the way, notice that I'm deliberately not plugging in the battery uh, that comes in last because in case of any short there's no power source so it, it protects my board from any mistakes I made doing inserting stuff you don't want one metal touching another okay and plug in the earpiece right there that's uh, the earpiece now plug in the touch layer be sure to position it well before you press otherwise you damage the socket and uh, the plug too I think mine has a lane to it. So the next thing is to plug in my battery like that. With the battery plugged in, I'll now have to bring my USB and get ready to see if I get an Apple logo on the screen. Okay. USB is a bit old, but uh, what matters is if it works. I uh, do not get any feedback from the phone, so I'm going to be forced to unplug that and then dive back into the battery. Replugging the battery. 